Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel Tomcat Stitchery. I'm Whitney and welcome back to another Sunday sew along. We're actually doing the Itch to Stitch Mountain View jeans today. <laughs> Mountain View pull on jeans today. First, before we dig in, I just really want to thank you all for all your kind comments. Um, I had meant to have this video up last weekend and, um, oh, are you wanting up here? Uh, and my grandmother passed away. So um, we had, it, the week before that had just turned into, um, she passed away, let's see, I get mixed up, like when you're seeing this, hold on, the dog is wanting some, a spot here. Um, but she had passed away and so the week that I was planning on filming this, um, I spent getting things ready for, uh, oh, really? <laughs> Such a problem, child. Uh, getting things ready for us to go back, um, to Missouri for the funeral and all that. So, thank you for your patience with me. I'm so sorry that this has taken so long to, um, pop up and, uh, yeah, today we're going to talk about all of our supplies and uh, we'll start sewing next week. So thank you again for bearing with me and also thank you for all your kind words. It's been a, a rough road. Um, my, her husband, my grandfather is still living. So um, Andy just turned 90 um, today as I'm filming this actually. Um, anyway, it's been really, really rough on him as well. So thank you. <laughs> all right, let's get into the Mountain View pull on jeans. Okay. These jeans uh, come in sizes double zero to 40. Um, the, originally this pattern came out in her double zero to size 20 range. This was actually one of the uh, patterns from the old catalog that she re-released with the new size range. When you buy this pattern, you get the full size range. You get the double zero through size 40. Um, and I'll put that hip um, and waist measurement right here for the, the range. Um, it's a nice uh, sizable range, which is great. Okay, so this pattern is um, a pull-on pair of pants, and it's meant for stretch wovens. And um, it's it's a bootleg cut or a flare leg kind of, so it's kind of fitted to the knee and then it flares. However, there are a lot of instructions in the pattern on how to make that a skinny leg if you want to, or a straight leg, um, or really any kind of leg that you want. Um, and she has you doing that in the basting stage. And to be honest, I've made this pattern, gosh, three times before. I really love this pattern. I'm very excited to make a new pair because my rear end has grown <laughs> since I made my other pairs. But I have made this in a skinny leg, a straight leg, and then the the flare, the boot cut um, leg that has been drafted for all that that pattern actually is drafted with. And um, I have a very shapely muscular extended calf and so a lot of times with a skinny leg it gets caught I get a lot of wrinkles right above my knee just because the fabric doesn't pull down all the way it gets caught above my calf but with this method of pinning things out you know she has you based and then you kind of pin things out um it fit my <laughs> calf like perfectly so they're probably they were the like the best fitting pair of skinny jeans I've had um, but I don't think I'm going to do a skinny leg here, but I will show you how to um, do a straight leg basically. So I will show you how to do that and if you could make it a skinny leg at that point if you wanted to. So we will be going over that. Um, I'm not going to be doing a twall or a muslin for this, um, but I am going to show you, I'm just doing one simple um, alteration to the pattern and we'll, we'll go to that in just a second. Um, yes, so we'll, I'll go through the sizing and stuff um, as well on... Well, here in just a second. <laughs> okay, so let's talk about all of the, before we get into sizing and that sort of thing, let's talk about fabric. So this pattern calls for a stretch woven such as denim, twill, corduroy, um, bottom weight basically with at least 20% stretch. 20 to 30 is ideal. Anything over 30, you may just have to size down and make a smaller size, but 20 to 30 is kind of the ideal um, stretch percentage. And before I go any further, I'm going to take you over to the cutting table really quick and show you how to determine if your fabric has um, the correct percentage of stretch. Okay, so I'm going to show you how to find the um, stretch of your fabric, your stretch percentage, to make sure that you have enough. This pattern calls for 20 to 30% stretch, um, ideally, so you want at least 20% stretch. Anything um, over 30%, you may need to size down. All right, so this is a stretch corduroy that I'll be using. It's pretty stretchy. So you wanna figure out which way your stretch goes. Um, this goes selvage to selvage like that. Each of these little squares here are an inch. So what I'm gonna do, and I like to double this over 
actually, and do this two layers, um, is I'm going to find a four inch. It's just easier to divide by four, four inch area here. I'm going to put one finger here and one finger at this other four inch. And I'm going to hold this and I'm going to stretch it, not until, I mean, I want it to be able to go back. So I'm not, you know, you're not stretching it for all it's worth, but you are going to give it a good stretch. And I can easily stretch this out to five inches. So I can go from four inches to five inches. So if we take that mathematically, so one inch extra out of the four is what I can stretch that. Well, one inch is 25% of four inches. So I have 25% stretch in this fabric. So I hope that that makes sense. Um, if I could stretch this four inches to six inches, that would mean I had 50% stretch. Um, so yeah, so hopefully that makes sense. But that is how you find the stretch percentage in any fabric that you've got. Um, so this one being at 25, it falls perfectly in that um, range of 20 to 30. So I should be good to go with this fabric. And um, yeah. Okay. So there you have it. You need at least 20 to 30% of stretch. Um, so I have two fabrics here. I have a stretch corduroy that's actually from, um, I think I'm gonna be making myself two pairs. Um, we'll see. You will see what I've made, <laughs> whether it's just one pair or two, but I would like to make two pairs, I think. So I've got this corduroy and um, this is from Joann's actually, and I was having a hard time finding it online but um, I could just not be looking in the right spot. But um, the other two pair of corduroys that I have made um, that no longer fit me <laughs> are uh, also from Joann's and I just found them to be nice and stretchy and comfortable. But even though these, uh, I can't find these, I am going to link to a very similar one from Stylemaker Fabrics because this is a fine whale cord, which means it's got a, just a very tiny um, whale in there, which is the little ribs. And um, she's got uh, one that has 30% stretch that is uh, very similar and comes in a few different colors. So I will link that down below. But yes, I'm gonna be using a corduroy. And then I'm gonna be using some of the Robert Kaufman Super Stretch Denim to make myself a, a pair of actual like jeans, which nice good stretch there. And I think, I think, I'm going to do a pair of straight legs in my corduroy pants and then a flare pair in these. I think I might do straight legs on these. I think I kind of want a pair of flares though, especially now that I have my uh, clogs. So we'll be going along with that. Um, so that's the fabric. So you need your fabric. Um, you're gonna need a half inch wide elastic. This gets sewn into the top of the seam allowance at the top of the pant just to keep things from stretching out. My favorite type of elastic is knitted elastic because it has, and I've talked about this before, it has like little ribs on it. I don't know if you're gonna be able to see that or not. Um, and you can cut along those ribs and it doesn't lose the integrity of the um, elastic. So you can cut it down. I keep an inch and a half wide. Um, elastic although I think this was just some half inch knitted elastic that I've got it's my favorite it's the flattest it's not bulky um, I don't have issues with it flipping and that kind of thing although this gets sewn into the the top seam allowance so it's not gonna flip anyway but yes love knitted elastics my favorite someone asked me that recently what my favorite type of elastic was knitted all the way <laughs> um, if you're gonna be doing a pair of jeans um, I would suggest top stitching thread and this is the Guterman Mara 30 which is my favorite top stitching thread and this is just kind of a classic color I'll leave it linked below I get mine from Wawak. Um, you actually don't need a jeans needle <laughs> because a ballpoint needle is actually better especially if you have a lot of stretch in your fabric but play around with um, yeah, some scraps to make sure you're getting you know the good tension that you like. And then also if you're going to be doing a pair of jeans rivets and this is just a little collection of rivets that I've got um, left over from other packages. Um, again, you can buy these also at Wawak. So I will leave all of that linked below. A ton of places sell stuff for jean making now. So, you know, um, obviously you don't need a zipper because these are pull-on pants. Um, 
if you do have a large hip to waist ratio, so if your waist is, you know, a few sizes smaller than your hips, you can put in a zipper if you'd like. Um, obviously then they're not pull on, but sometimes for that body shape, you just need to do that. You can either keep everything the same, just do an invisible zipper on the side, or you could do an invisible zipper up the front, or you could do a fly zipper up the front if you wanted to. Um, yeah, so you, there are ways to, you know, get around that if you're worried, you know, if the, if it just won't stretch enough to go over your hips to then fit your waist properly. But usually also with stretch, you can get away with a lot more just because the stretch will hug your hips. Um, so you can get away with a little bit smaller size for your hips. And then if you've got the elastic and stuff for your waist, it kind of all comes out in the wash a little bit. Um, these pants hit right below your natural, I mean like literally just right below the natural waist. If I'm, or maybe just kind of, I guess the top comes right at your natural waist. Um, yeah. And I have in the past, um, I'm not sure if I'm going to do that with these or not. I might. Added belt loops. Uh, because when you have a belt on, you really can't tell that they're pull-on pants. It really just looks, you know, a nice thick belt. It really does look like uh, regular jeans. But I, th I don't know. I don't know if I'll add that or not or just wear my things untucked um, when I wear them with these. Maybe I'll put them on one and not the other. We'll just go from there. Um, although that's something you could add later if you wanted to, because those just get top stitched on, but we could definitely do that in this, um, sew along. So, okay. So I think that's it for supplies. I'm going to be making a size eight because that fits my hip measurement. I'm not worried about the waist measurement because of the stretch. It will fit fine. Um, I have a 40 inch hip right now, 39 and a half, 40 inch hip. Um, I think I was... I make a size eight a ton in itch to stitch patterns, but with their pants, a lot of times I could size down to a size six just because of my hip measurement being smaller. But um, put on a little bit of weight, so which is why my old pairs are fitting a little snugger. Um, so yes, I'll be making the size eight, which fits the 40 inch hip. And like I said, I'm running it like a 39 and a half to 40 inch. So just decided to go on up to that. Um, yeah, so I'm gonna take you over to the cutting table now and I will show you the alterations I'm gonna make. And uh, yeah, then we'll get everything cut out and then next week we will start sewing. Okay, if you have any questions about any of the notions or supplies, leave it down below. I'll answer those as soon as I can. And uh, yeah, we'll start sewing next week. Okay guys, I hope you're having a wonderful Sunday and I'll see you next time. <laughs> Bye. <laughs> okay, so now we are going to talk about alterations that I am making to the pattern. We're going to go through all of our pattern pieces that we need. I'm doing very minimal um, pattern adjustments. Okay, so we've got our back yoke that gets cut out of fabric. Your back pocket. You've got your um, front pocket yoke, which is like a front pocket facing. So here's my pocket piece here. And the reason I haven't cut this out yet, and I'll show you that in a minute. But this, um, the pocket pieces, and I forgot to mention this in the big video, but... Um, these pieces we're going to actually cut out of quilting cotton uh, because this part here will get cut out of regular fabric and it gets kind of applique onto the front of that pocket, which is very typical in jeans making. And then that's what pops out of the top part of your pocket, you know, so your pocket is like right here and you see the fashion fabric that matches the rest of the jeans there. Um, but it allows you to make the pocket pieces out of uh, quilting cotton, which is much more stable but we're going to do a little alteration and I'm going to take both of these pocket pieces to the fly. Then that's going to create kind of a, um, control, a tummy control thing going on. Um, which I want, especially since I'm using stretchy fabric. So we've got that. We have our front pocket and front or front pocket facing, which we'll be dealing with that in just a second. We have our back waistband and our front waistband. We cut two out of each of these. Oh, I need to take that down. Does that drive anyone else nuts when you've got like extra paper flapping around? <laughs> it drives me nuts, especially when it's like a little sliver right there. I need it, but there we go. Okay, so our two waist pieces. And then um, this pattern has one front piece, which we'll be using here in just a second to draft new pocket pieces. And then it's got a two piece back which I know a lot of people kind of um, aren't that into, but it gives such a good fit in the butt um, because you've got basically a dart when these two get put together like so. 
it um, creates just a little bit of shaping. So that created with your um, yoke that's all in the back, you get just a really nice um, shape there in the back. Okay, and this makes it fitting on um, fabric easier too. But one thing that I am going to do, normally I would make uh, adjustments to length. I'm not going to do that on these pair of pants because I'm not sure how long I want these. I think that um, I'm actually going to make this pair just like the um, pattern. So it's going to be a flared or a bootleg pant uh, in my corduroy. But I will show you how to change the leg, though, if you do want to change the leg. But I want to leave the length as is because I may want to wear a heeled boot with these. Um, and so if that's the case, I don't need to take any length off. So I'm going to leave the length as is, wait till they're finished. And then because it's very straight here at the bottom, me taking the length up from the bottom shouldn't be that big of a deal. So that's what I'm going to do there. But one adjustment that I do have to make to every pant pattern is I have to take a scoop out of my back crotch curve here because I always need a, it's a low seat adjustment is what it's called. Basically the fullness of my butt is at the bottom of my butt. <laughs> so I need just a little extra um, room just right through here um, to give room for my butt. Now it's very counterintuitive when it comes to pants. You're like, well, you're taking fabric away. That would make something smaller. Um, but when you think of your body going into this negative space, you're actually making it bigger for your body to fit into this negative space. This is where your, um, this comes around, you know, the, if you're looking at a cross section of a body, this is where your body fits into. Uh, and you don't have to worry about making any adjustments to the hip or the side seam to accommodate for that because this is just giving you room right there at the butt where you need it. So I know that that's counterintuitive and I remember it really taking my brain a second to think that taking away fabric made more room, but that is the nature of crotch curves and arm size. <laughs> So I've just marked in three eighths of an inch. That's very typical for me. I'm going to go to nothing here at center. And I'm just kind of freehanding it. There. And I'll just cut that away right there. And that will give me enough room for my rear end. So that is all I'm going to do on the pattern for sizes. But now let's draft, let's draft some um, new pocket pieces. I also think that this is going to be fine. Um, obviously this is going to be making the front more rigid because uh, you've got, you're going to be using quilting cotton for the pocket pieces. However, um, I think you're going to have enough, I have enough stretch in the back to still pull these up over my hips. All right, so the first thing that we need to do when we are setting all this up here, I'm going to pull all the rest of these pieces out of the way so you don't need them right now. All right, so the only pieces we need to do this are the front, and then you're going to need your front pocket and your front pocket facing. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to draft a new piece for the front pocket and then we'll draft the front pocket facing off of this new front pocket. So basically, I'm probably going to have to add more. That's a little annoying. What I'm doing here is I'm going to line it up, the pattern pieces here, um, how I would be sewing it. And I'm going to have to add more paper. Okay, I'm actually, two secs, I'm actually am gonna cut this out. I'm just gonna draft a whole new piece. I was gonna try and just draft onto this piece, but I don't have enough paper, so might as well. Basically, I'm just I'm going to do this on the outside, but this is how we are going to be. That's how it will be sewn. Obviously, this front pocket piece will be on the back side, but um, I just want to match up all of my points here. Okay, 
And um, you could put tape down. I thought about putting a weight, but um, then that's going to be in the way of me putting my tracing paper on top of it. So. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is just lay this paper over this like so. And I'm going to trace everything, but instead of, um, okay, so let's trace our known pocket pieces. And you can put weights just to keep things from shifting, but maybe just not on the area where you need to trace. Okay. All right, so we're going to kind of trace off uh, the area of the pocket that we know is not going to change. So that is this side piece. Make sure you keep your notches on there. And then we're going to do this top waist piece notch, except we are going to continue to the whole front of the fly notch. Mark in the fly, but I'm not going to go all the way there because I'm going to mark here. We've got our curved pocket and you can kind of freehand this, but I'm just going to kind of go whoop, okay, and mark in any notches that you've got on there. And then you are also going to want to mark your green line. Okay, so there is our new, make sure you mark it, this is front pocket, cut two, and this is a size eight. All right, so there is my new front pocket piece. So it's basically this piece and I have just extended it on to the front fly. Now we are going to want to do the same thing to this pocket facing, and we're gonna want them to match. Let me get a fresh piece of paper here. Okay, so now, cut this out should have cut these out earlier. Sorry, I was thinking I could just draft right on them. Not the case. All right. All right, so now, actually I can move that piece and I can move, we don't need our front piece anymore. So now the only pieces we need are our newly drafted front pocket piece and our front pocket facing. And we don't need our front anymore. All right, so this should now fit onto here like so. There's kind of the original. So now we're going to put this Okay. We want that all made up and you may have trouble kind of seeing what I'm doing here cuz I've got multiple layers of the tracing paper. All right, so now, sorry, that was loud. I'm going to trace my known edges. So I'm tracing this cut out part of this curve. We're going to cut this. But now I'm going to go across the top here, but I'm going to trace that extra because I want these two pieces. Um, the pocket and the pocket facing to fit together perfectly. So they get drafted off the same piece. And there.
here we go. This is our pocket facing. Cut two. Size eight. Okay. And you can check too to see if you've got any. I don't think there's any notches on this piece. There's not. Okay. So there we go. There. So now our front pocket and our front pocket facing can just be put aside. Like we're not going to use those at all. And uh, we can cut these out and cut this out of our quilting cotton. Okay, so let's talk about what we're cutting out of what. Okay, so these two pieces, the pocket facing and your front pocket, whether you've drafted new ones, you're going to use the ones that come with the pattern. Those get cut out of quilting cotton of your choice. It's kind of fun to use a fun print. And then everything else gets cut out of your fashion fabric. Now I'm using corduroy, so I want to remind you that that has a nap, which means it looks different um, right side up or upside down, depending on how you look at it. So you want all of your pieces, it doesn't matter which way they go, but you want all your pieces facing the same way. So you want the top to be the top um, no matter what. Uh, that's kind of a good rule of thumb for most things, but sometimes you could, you know, you don't want to cut you know, your front piece out this way and then cut your back piece out this way because they will look different because the fabric has nap. Okay, so just keep that in mind. You want everything going the same way. So I'm going to get um, everything cut out and then I will meet you back here next week and we will start sewing. <laughs>